A few days ago, I made a video with some tips and some advice that I wanted to share with you, but there was one very specific part that I made sure to highlight. Uh, this is a big one. So when you're standing at a distance, keep in mind, what can they do at this range? And I think that phrasing leaves a little bit too much up to interpretation. What I really should have said is think about what they will do at this range. But to give you a sense of what that really means, let's hop into training mode. Now pretend in the situation that we are still Cami, and I'm not this evil looking Ryu over here. <laughs> if I tell you as Cami, I need you to keep in mind everything that Ryu can do at this range. Well, we first have to think about what can he do. So from this range, of course he can dash, of course he can just walk forward. Sometimes what a lot of people like to do is walk forward and then press a button. He can jump, he can jump and do a Tatsu. You can do a fireball. There's so many options, right? You have to think about so much. And that's the problem with the phrasing that I used in the previous video. We don't think about what he can do. We think about what he will do. And while that's not a guarantee, we're not reading his inputs or anything like that, we can make a very educated guess. And as the game goes further along and as the sets go further along, that educated guess becomes more and more of a fact if they don't adapt. So for example, I played a Ryu yesterday who just liked to do stand, uh, crouch medium kick buffered into Jodan. So anytime I'd walk into range of where this might hit, he'd just throw this out. So what I can do is one, we use my walk speed to make it whiff, or two, I just walk into the buffer and it comes out. That's my options. I don't have to think about everything else that can happen at this range because he's not DPing, he's not anti-airing me, he's not throwing this button, he's not doing this, he's not throwing a fireball. All he's doing is crouch medium kick. This makes your mental stack a lot more manageable. And so as you're playing and as I've started playing more and more, all I think about is at this range, what does he like to do? What will he do? Not what can he do? I know all of Ryu's options at this range. I don't need to think about that. I need to think about what he will do, what this player is doing. And so now we've gone from playing the character matchup to playing the player matchup. And that's why it's important to use the 99 seconds that the game gives you in that first round to really feel your opponent out. That's something Juice has told me a few days ago, but I'm now seeing uh, the effects of it. We kind of get caught up in the fact that we want to win as fast as possible. And maybe the character we're playing is a rushdown character who feels like they need to always be in, always be trying to get in. And we don't really think about the fact that there are 99 seconds to feel this person out and to get their habits uh, on lock. And something that I feel is very true is no matter what level of player you're playing against, whether you're playing a gold player or a warlord player, everybody has their habits. Everybody has something they like to do and they have a weakness. It's just up to you to find it. And some people are very good at masking it much better than others. And some people, very strong players are much better at finding those habits very quickly because they know what to test for. I personally feel like this is where the game really starts is like us walking around a neutral thinking about, we, we know the options of each other's characters and we're trying to figure each other out now. This is where things really begin. And I think that's why you hear a lot of people in the Street Fighter community especially say that the game really starts when you hit diamond because it takes you this long to understand all this stuff to get to this point. And I hope that these videos can kind of fast track you there and cut down on the things that you need to learn the hard way. And I also felt like I needed to make this to clarify what I was saying before. You know, it's kind of my responsibility <laughs> to clarify things and not just leave them out in the open like that. You know, I think it's good to leave things up to interpretation sometimes. I feel like I might have just led you in the complete wrong direction by having you look for what can happen rather than what will happen because that leads to situations like Ryu players jumping at you three times, resetting to neutral, and then you're still looking for a dash or a fireball plus that jump. But in reality, we all know the jump is coming again. And so I feel like if I would have left things as they were, it, it would confuse you guys in terms of mental stack. Like everybody would always be thinking about uh, every single option that Ryu can do at this specific range. And it's just not conducive to getting better. It, it just led to a lot of confusion in myself. So I know it led to confusion in people who watched that video and actually listened to what I had to say. But yeah, I hope this clarified things. Uh, I hope it helped you. And if it did, please consider subscribing. I'll talk to you again very soon. And thank you so much for watching.